Good morning, friends. Today we will be discussing about the design flow. Okay, so design flow it is with respect to the very log which we are speaking today. So very log when we think about the for the hardware descriptive language. So for the final hardware which we are going to implement our program. Okay, so we need to follow some procedure. So here we are about to know about that uh, procedure or process which is evolved in the design flow of the chip okay so we will take one example we want to build one application okay so let me take one example application of an uh, hardware say suppose say calculator right so for this calculator so we know what a calculator will function, right? So in the calculator, we have multiple operations. Is it or not, right? So addition, multiplication, subtraction, division are the some basic functionality of an calculator, right? And for this, you require also the input. Is it or not? So what kind of input you are going to give, whether it is a two bit, whether it is a one bit, whether it is a three bit, so this all specification we should do. So we should understand what is the output expected in the calculator and what input we should give and how that input will be processed and how it will give an result. So this is the overall structure or application which we wanted to build. Is it done? So when we wanted to design a calculator, we have to list out all these parameters then finally, we need to build onto a chip, right? So whatever we have discussed till now, that will be processed in these type. Okay. So first, you can observe that this is the design specification which has been present. Is it or not? So design specification, we have to know what are all the inputs, what are all the parameters which we are going to use in designing the final product, which is the application oriented, right? So when we know what are the inputs, when we know what are the parameters, then we need to go for this behavioral description. Behavioral description, it is just a, uh, what we call it is algorithm type or a layout type. So what we wanted to expect that should be briefed, okay? So that part we call it as a behavioral description. Initialization also we call, right? Identifying the components also, operators also, all this into input also we have to identify. So all this process will be done at the design specification and the behavioral description, okay? Next, it comes to the RTL description, okay? RTL description, RTL stands for the register to transistor logic or level. So whatever components, input variables, and all those things, we are going to use some basic gate level, okay, register level type. So where we are going to implement that logic, okay. So that we are going to implement in this one. And finally, we need to map it to the transistor level. See, finally, the hardware will be having a chip. So any electronic device you consider, there will be a chip. And within the chip, or what program or what functionality, everything it will be designed. And that you are going to program using the transistor, right? So that is what we are highlighted in this third uh, part, which is your RTL description. And you can observe there is uh, one more arrow mark. So if any changes you wanted to incorporate, so you can do it. Again, you no need to go to the earlier section and change the input parameter and other stuff, okay? So that is one advantage which you have. Then once you know what are the design parameters, what are the, the behavioral description type, what are the identification of the register values, right? what are the transistor which you are going to use, right? then whatever you have selected, whether it is correct or not, you need, needs to be verified. Okay, So that is why we have this functional verification and testing. Right. And it is at the very early stage. Why it is in the early stage? Because you want it to be very clear whether what you are trying to implement, whether you are in a right path or not. 
visit or no. So to have that uh, verification, so initial also we are going to check it out. Okay. So then we are having this logic synthesis, then timing verification. So logic synthesis means whatever the program which we are going to build it, that we are going to check whether any uh, uh, logical uh, errors are there or not. Those are all observation we need to observe it. Okay. So then timing verification, we need to observe that whatever programs we are going to set, whether it is correct or not. Right. Then we have the gate level netlist. Why this netlist is because finally the product which we are going to build in, it should be installed into an hardware. Is it or no? Finally, it is onto a hardware, but hardware is not, it will not understand the high level language. Okay. It is a low level language, right? So you need to make your program at the bit level and that you are going to achieve using this gate level netlist. Okay. So when we learn about the hardware, how it is going to be implemented onto an FPGA. So how we are going to generate this netlist, you will be observing. Okay. Now, as of now, at this initial, at the beginning point, that list is nothing but the generation of your code into the binary form. Okay. And that binary form will be dumped onto an hardware. Right. And when you are generating, again, you are going to check it. Right. You are going to verify and test it whether it is correct or not. Right. So these are the design parameters, procedures, which we are going to do at the initial stage whether my program will work it out or not. And once it is been done, then what we do, it has to be dumped onto a chip level. So when you want to dump onto a chip layer, I will go for this floor planning automatic place and rule, right? So where your code will be made to be dumped onto an IC, okay, IC or integrated chip, okay? So that chip level, we are going to have this process. See, friend, uh, students, at this functional verification also, you can observe that if any changes is there, you can go back and do it, right? So wherever this verification and testing is available, if any changes is required, you can go back and do that and you can start again from the this point, okay? That is one advantage we have. See, when we start and we observe if there is no, if any error is there, it's not like that we should start from the beginning, okay? So wherever any problem is there, uh, debugging is there, that you can go and recheck and you can do it. That is the option which you have, okay? Then it comes with respect to the physical layout. Physical layout indicating that you are making your chip in a very compact way. Nobody wants more space or usage uh, usage in the spacing should be, must be very minimal, right? That is why you have to go for the physical layout because you want your device should be very compact. That is one important thing which we have to follow it, right? Again, for this one, one more part is there, which is your layout verification. Layout verification also you are going to check. See, again, there are two things. One layout verification, if any place and route, if any error is there, so you can go back to that section and you can do it, right? Or if the program itself, it is wrong, you can go back to the main, to the RTL section and you can do. And once everything it is correct, see the design parameter, the design section, the logical implementation, the functional verification, generation of your bit file, placing and route, whatever it is, uh, which you have designed, whether if it is correct or not in everything, if it is correct, then finally it is reached to the implementation level, right? So this is the process which we are going to use from the initial to the implementation stage, right? At the beginning, I have given an example of a calculator. So we understand what is the input. The input should be from zero to nine. That is the input keyboard which I have to give up. And that how many bit value it is, whether it is a four bit, whether it is a eight bit, usually they will take take with a uh, eight bit value, right, for the calculation and all those things, right. Then we will have a different keys, right, 
which is for the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. I've taken only these four as a basic operation in calculator, but now in calculator, you will find n number of operation which has to be done. And what I do is that when I give a design specification, how much should be the input, what should be the operation, right? I have built the RTL, this one. I am going to check that one. I'm going to give different kind of inputs and check whether I'm going to get a sufficient output or not. So all these things I will be doing. And once I confirm that everything it is okay, then I will go for this placing routing right at the chip level, which is there for the physical layout and layout verification. And when everything it is correct, then only I'll be able to dump my program at this implementation. And once my program is dumped onto an hardware, so you'll be using an interfacing of a keypad and you'll be interfacing with a display kind of a thing for your calculator. So you input some values like 4 plus 4 and you have to check your result. 4 plus 4 input, how you are going to give using your keypad and result you are going to check the 4 plus 4, the answer is 8, which will be displayed onto a screen. Okay, so it is this way you are going to build. So this is the a simple example of a calculator, how it has been done in a very long using this design flow, right? And this design flow, it is applicable for the tiniest of project to the bigger level where more number of components are also present. All of them will follow this procedure in building up their application using the very long technology. So this is one simple example. And this is also important from the exam point of view. You usually get one uh, 10 mark question every time asked, explain design flow of the very long. So you have to draw this uh, uh, flow diagram and you need to explain what are the things which you will be doing in each of these part. Okay. So this is about the design flow. We will continue in the next class. Thank you.